Throwback Thursday, calling those things that be not as though they were. You're having coffee with Conrad on Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, bringing Jesus to your face, digging deeper into the things of the Bible and life in general so we can go higher with God. Now, it's Thursday. I decided to do a throwback Thursday, uh, an amazing week we're having uh, for ConradRocks.net for Jesus. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, to get this in there. This is a video. This is some audio from a video I did uh, while I was... Living by faith. <laughs> this was done in February of 2012, and I was literally living by faith back then. Um, now, the reason I wanted to do this video, the, what inspired this, is for years I would hear people say things like, well, you know, speak to those dry bones or say something to your mountain. And I had this check in my spirit that these, th- what they were doing was based on a selfish lust. And, you know, in James... Um, you know, you ask and you do not receive because you want to spend it on your selfish lust. So I had this amazing check in my spirit. I said, there's something not right about this, even though they're quoting scripture. And we all know in Matthew 4, in Luke 4, Satan even quotes scripture, but he has a selfish purpose. He's trying to get Jesus to kill himself using scripture. So yeah, check out my video, Bible chopping. Um, you know, have you ever felt someone was using scripture on you? You know, and you're like, there's a check. You know, there's something not right. So it's good to put things in context. So I decided to put some of these verses that people are using in context, you know, uh, to see exactly what the Lord was meant there. And I did resolve the check in my spirit. I finally got it. So here's here's the audio from a video I did in February 2012 calling those things that be not as though they were. You are digging deeper with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. Hey everyone, Conrad from Conrad Rocks. Thank you for following my blog. Thank you for your contributions. My gosh, you got me through some tough times. It comes down to food sometimes, guys. Anyway, there's a teaching... Um, that has kind of been bothering me for a few years now, and I I haven't really talked about it much. I may have alluded to it a little bit. It has to do with Bible chopping. Check out my video, Bible chopping. It also has to uh, believing the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2, which is Jesus. Now, one thing that's very interesting to me is that when... I believe when a pastor gets revelation or a preacher, they'll get revelation, they'll, they'll actually hear from God. But something happens, like I heard it through the grapevine, and it gets completely twisted out in, in, in the congregation. I guess the people are falling asleep, or it just, it just happens, and then the people only hear what they want to hear, and then it just gets twisted. And the big offender is calling those things that be not as though they were. Um, I hear that all the time, and basically you know the person telling you that says, oh, I can do witchcraft. Uh, I, I call Jesus Lord, like the Matthew seven twenty one through 23 crowd, so I can do this. I prophesied in the name of Jesus. Well, basically, they're not hearing from God. They're just saying stuff and calling it, you know, their selfish lust. We'll get into that in a little bit. Now, calling those things that be not as though they were comes from Romans four seventeen. Let's took Let's just take this one verse here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now, it's God that does that. It's not Abraham. It's not somebody else. It's not Satan. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's, it's God in this context. God's the one that raises the dead. God is the one who calls those things which be not as though they were. Then the people, they'll, they'll go on to some other scriptures. Um, they'll say, well, you need to speak to that mountain. And I've got to tell you, this was I've struggled with this 
uh, verse, but we need to look at it in context. I'm not conceding that you can just go around just saying stuff because there's some before this verse and before this, after this verse that sandwiches this in that puts it in a little different context. I want to share this with you. Mark 11:23. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, whosoever, wow, now that's a tough word to deal with, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou taken up and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what he saith come to pass, he shall have it. Now, I was thinking the other day, and I, this just hit me right now. In Matthew 7, when Jesus is talking about, you know, whosoever keeps these words of mine will be like he built his house upon the rock. Well, do you realize if you keep those words in the Sermon on the Mount, you read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, I'm like, that sounds like that makes you a Christian because you're a disciple. You're doing what he says. Pretty interesting. I just wanted to throw that in there. But this verse 1123, hopefully that was for somebody because I just got that. <laughs> anyway, on this verse 1123, whosoever shall say to this mountain, you got the verse before it, Jesus says, have faith in God. doesn't say have faith in man. Have faith in hocus pocus. It says have faith in God. Now we're going to talk a little bit about faith because some people just define faith as, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, Jesus is the author and finisher, finisher of our faith. Okay, He's the author. Hebrews 12.2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Okay, He speaks something forth. If he doesn't speak something forth, how can you believe it? He hadn't told you anything. You can't believe something he hadn't told you, right? We'll, get, we'll examine that a little bit further. Um, 11.24, and then he goes, you know, this is the other part of the sandwich. Therefore, now hold on a second. The word therefore is there for a reason. Therefore, I say unto you, what things, what things soever you desire, when you pray... Pray means to ask. It means to have a dialogue. My sheep hear my voice, John chapter 10. If you're not his sheep, you're not going to hear his voice. If you don't hear his voice, you're not his sheep. People call Christians crazy. Oh, I heard from God. No, you know, God doesn't talk through the mouth of a dog and tell you to kill your family. That's contrary to New Testament scripture. Come on, you know. But uh, Jesus says that his sheep hear his voice. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, desire from the Latin, of the Father, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them. How can you believe something if he didn't answer you in prayer? We're going to talk about that a little bit, too. Um, this person that speaks to this mountain has to have faith in God. It's a whosoever, but they have to have faith in God. Um, what? How can you believe something that you haven't been told? I mean, I really have a hard time. People say, well, just I'm believing for this. Well, did God tell you? We're going to get into James. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your selfish pleasures or your, your pleasures. Uh, some translations say your selfish lust. I'm going to read again. You ask, you ask and receive not. Whoa, they didn't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your selfish pleasures. So when someone said, I believe in God for this, well, did God tell them that? Okay. One example I like to use is when God is prophesying to, to Abraham about the descendants being in bondage for 400 years. <laughs> I mean, that was declared and decreed by the mouth of God. If you, if you pretended that it wasn't true, then you're going against God's will. It has to be in line with God's will. So if you're asking against God's will, you're not going to get it because you're trying to spend it on your selfish lust. Hopefully I'm not convoluting it too much there. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make the case here that we have to have a word from God. The sower sows the word. You know, We have to have a word. And then we believe the word. We can't have a not word and believe it. Okay, does that make any sense? Does that make sense? How about Paul? I, like, I want to use him for an example. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7-9, Paul, 
was getting lots of revelations, and he was getting the big head because he was getting revelations. So, so God sent him, if you read, I think the word's demon, a lot of people fight over it, but it's right here in Scripture. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted over measure. For this thing besought, I besought the Lord thrice. Paul besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So God's will was for that thing not to depart. Okay? Paul was asking, and wait, Paul is a mighty man of faith, man. Look at the exit he did. He raised people from the dead. He was left for dead. I mean, Paul was a super-duper Christian, okay? If anybody's an example, Paul says somewhere, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I'm thinking that guy has faith, and his writings are for our example. He besought the Lord three times for what could possibly be a demon to leave him. It was against God's will. Now notice that Paul received an answer. And then that was the end of the story. Paul did not not get an answer. Paul paid three times. Okay? Um, here's another one. Speak to those dry bones. I hear this in the congregation, out on the streets, and stuff like that. Man, do you know the story? <laughs> I mean, it, it just gets to me. It just gets frustrating to me. What they're talking about is when Ezekiel speaks to the dry bones. And the context that they're taking, I know what they believe because this is how they talk. They just go speaking things forth. And in this example, Ezekiel did speak to the dry bones only after he received it in prayer, in this in the spirit. In Ezekiel thirty seven, you'll see that that he was in the spirit. Let's find the uh let's find the uh mode that he was in. I'm pretty sure it was in the spirit. Yeah. Oh, okay. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out of the spirit out in the spirit of the Lord. So he's in a prayerful conversation with God, and in verse 3, he says to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Okay, now, they're having a dialogue. My sheep hear my voice. When we pray, we're hearing, we're we're dialoguing. It ain't just, Mama, Daddy, God bless Mama, Daddy, spot, amen. Okay, we're having a dialogue. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. So Ezekiel does not have the answer to this question. Again, he said to me, prophesy upon these bones. Tell Ezekiel to do it. Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear what? The word of the Lord. God is authoring, <laughs> authoring this. He's authoring it, man. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Okay, and then it goes on. And then he says, I prophesied. So Ezekiel was in prayer. He was having a dialogue, a conversation. He believed that he received instructions from the Lord. Okay? Now, the popular, the popular doctrine is you can just go around proclaiming stuff without, without you know, just, I believe this, you know. Well, did God tell you? That's my point. Now, another really good tricky one. Oh, this is a good tricky one. And I'm guilty of this because it took me a while to get this. Um, Job twenty two twenty eight, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and a light shall shine upon thy ways. Now, decree a thing. Okay, we can decree. Let's put it in context, and then I got another super duper whammy for you. Um, people may paste that on their on their refrigerator. Look out for it. Now, let's just go to the verse before it. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing. So prayer, okay? Obviously, this guy is probably alluding to the fact that during prayer, the guy received an answer, okay? Um, We've got to have a relationship with God. One other little thing that you may not know. This was from Eliphaz the Temanite. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. If you read that verse in context, you'll see who was speaking. It was Eliphaz. It was not Job. Now, God says that Eliphaz spoke that which was not right. What he said was not right. Okay. Job 42.7. And it was so that after Jehovah had spoken these words unto Job, Job, Jehovah said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, 
and against thy two friends for another thing that oh uh, against thy two friends for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath and it was so that after Jehovah had spoken these words unto Job Jehovah said unto Eliphaz the Timonite my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has now why is this important this is important because it nullifies the decree of thing okay um, even though the scripture it doesn't necessarily nullify it okay that's kinda the point is the person saying it was Eliphaz and he says oh you can decree something kinda like what's going on now so I always use the rule of thumb the rule of thumbs bad they always use the rule out of the mouths of two or three witnesses there are several scriptures that say that and the sum of the word of God is true one Psalm 119 160 so we have to use that as a rule um, if you remember um, in the book of Job God was gonna whack them <laughs> he's gonna whack the other guys until Job had prayed for them now another thing is and this is a little bit troubling especially for the new believers is faith faith is evidence it's the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen in Hebrews chapter 11 it's a great chapter on faith and I'm not going to talk I'm not going to read the whole thing here but faith from the context I, I read the word, have faith in God, you have to believe what he said. How can you believe God if he never said anything? You get my point? If you read Hebrews 11, look at the, the examples. I'll do a couple of few here. Hebrews 11, three, 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, how do we understand something through faith? We believe the word. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven, heavens and the earth. Now, so we know from the word of God. We believe it. That's how we understand it. Hebrews 11.7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Noah believed. Noah had a conversation with God. My sheep hear my voice. Um, and he acted. Faith without works is dead. He acted upon the faith. What if Noah just said, yep, there's going to be a flood, and he never built the ark? Okay? <laughs> That'd be all she wrote, buddy. But anyway, my point is, he had a dialogue with God. He acted upon what God told him. The evidence of the word. Okay? The hope. His hope was that he was going to get through the flood. He had that hope because God told him. Hebrews 11.8 By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for inheritance, obeyed. He obeyed the word. <laughs> and he went out not knowing where he went. Abraham had a dialogue with God. Abraham didn't go, I'm believing for a new place to live. No, he had a dialogue with God. Okay? Um, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, Abraham knew God was not going to whack Isaac. He just knew, he said, you know what? It even says later on that he believed that God would even raise him from the dead. He didn't know how, but he had the he had the evidence of hope. He believed in this scripture. Genesis seventeen nineteen, and God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So he had a word from God that, that Isaac was going to be a father of many nations at somewhere else in Genesis. But he knew that this was going to continue. So that's why he went ahead with the offering him up uh, the uh, and God prevented him now another thing that's puzzled me I want to see if I can find it real quick I know it's in Samuel 
It's in one of the Samuels, man. <laughs> if this takes too long, I'll just run over it without the scriptures. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. And Samuel grew. This is in 1 Samuel 3.19. Okay. And Samuel grew, and Jehovah was with him. I'll read the King James Version. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Now, I want to go ahead and examine a different aspect of this. And I kind of think, I kind of think this is where the original teaching originated. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. The Lord was with Samuel, and did not let one of his words fall to the ground. So, if you ever have time to ponder on this, Samuel had a relationship with God. Now, this whole thing about did not let one of his words fall to the ground. I've been thinking about that. If you have a child, and they, they grow up in age, but they also grow up in levels of responsibility. You're not going to let a two-year-old drive your car. One of the things about doing, look at my uh, video, Taking the Name of the Lord in Vain, something like that. Uh, I think that's the title. One of the things about doing in the name, in the name of Jesus, it's not just a tagline. It means nature, character, and authority of Jesus. So Samuel was in the nature, character, and authority of the Lord. The Lord was with him, and he did not let one of his words fall to the ground. If you read the story of Samuel, everything he said come to pass. Um, now what I'm thinking, though, why did he not let any of his words fall to the ground? What does that mean? Well, you're not going to let a two-year-old drive your car. You're not going to let a six-month-old get milk out of the fridge. You know what I'm saying? He was growing in nature, character, and authority of the father. So I, I believe it had to do with relationship. Now, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, can you decree a thing? Okay? Saying, in Jesus' name, I kind of believe those guys in Matthew 7, 21, 23, am I going to do it again? Yes, I'll do it again. Sorry. I'm always going to this one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. How do you know his will unless he told you? You've got to know what it is. Okay? Um, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Go, in the name of Jesus. You know, maybe they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And in thy name, cast out devils. In Jesus' name, get out. Maybe they're just using it as a tagline. And in thy name, done miracles. I don't know. It's something to think about. And I'll profess to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Jesus never, Gnosko, had a relationship with them. Another key word, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Um, I'm hearing another verse right now. Whoa. Okay, this is good. For somebody. Uh, let's try this right here. I think this is it. Okay. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, Jesus, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven? That's Hebrews 12, 25. It's just after the chapter of faith. We cannot refuse what God is saying. Our Father who art in heaven, do not refuse what he says. Anyway, I urge you guys to seek God, seek Jesus, have a relationship, wait upon him, be still, let him, you know, give him time to answer in your prayers. And, and yeah, and if this has blessed you, please uh, go consider giving me an offering over there. It's on the right side of the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher. There you have it. I want to thank you for listening to ConradRocks.net, having coffee with Conrad. If this has touched you, please consider sharing this with your friends, uh, your family, your frenemies, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, whatever. And even ask people, hey, do you listen to the Conrad Rocks podcast? It's all about Jesus. Amen. So spread the word. God bless you. Thank you. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. 
Hi, this is John, John Shower House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Amy from Amy Daily. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. Christine White, I'm a stander for the Lord. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Boy, that's Ministries.org. Jackie Smith from the Intention. Christian Panure Podcast. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are Andy Coffee with Conrad. ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks. Tune in radio.